Hello, my name is Luke, and if you've ever wondered how to make a professional song from scratch, wonder no more. I'm here to do it today. I'm going to be making a polished demo so that I have something to write to later on, either for myself as an artist or for other people to use it for their songs. And I don't know what the song is going to sound like, but we're going to go through this process together and see how it's done. I had this idea to have a drum groove going, a vintage drum machine. Okay, so I've, I'm starting with this beat here from a 606 kit, which sounds like this. I'm gonna make all the velocities even so it sounds like a drum machine playing it. Nice, and we're gonna loop that. I just wanna add a little bit of color to it. So I added a little bit of overdrive and then a little bit of that digital distortion effect just to age it. Nice, and just to make it a bit more punchy, I'm gonna add knock. Okay, I've got that sound in the way that I want it. That's gonna be a nice little loop that's gonna play throughout. I had this idea for a guitar part. Okay, so I've recorded in an acoustic guitar here and I've timed it using flex mode, the polyphonic flex setting to 16th notes. And then I just went through and just fine tuned it and then added a little bit of EQ and compression just to take out the lows and just tame the peaks with the compressor on there. And then I added an RC20 this is just adding a little bit of distortion, a little bit of chorus to give it a bit more vibe. If I press J, that'll join the track together like that. Uh, so now we have one file and all the timing has been imprinted onto it, which is uh, exactly what I want. That can be our verse. Now I'm thinking I would like some kind of melody to go over the top. I'm getting a slight delay on my keyboard, so I'm just gonna change the buffer. Just want to check that this is the right sound. Okay, so I've got my sound here. Adds just a really nice texture to that, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of chorus. I'm just gonna turn it down a bit. It's quite dry at the moment, so I'm going to add some reverb to it. And I think I want like a pad going underneath that guitar just to give it a little bit more support because right now it feels very thin. We'll start with the piano. I'm thinking really cute and intimate. This felt piano should be good. I'm just changing the velocity for it all to be the same across. In Logic, you can do that by pressing Command A and then Shift and Command and dragging the velocity button. It changes all of them to be equal and the same. So a lot of my songs tend to be built like this. They tend to be built um, with these kind of mid sections, drums, bass, uh, things like that. So every song is kind of made up of the same formula and the same framework, which uh, is drums, bass, mids. So that would be your guitar synths vocals and then effects every song is made up of those and so that's what i'm trying to think about when i'm making up the song so you see i've got my section here now and it sounds great i love it i'm going to move on to a second part now I'm trying to think from the progression of a song as i'm singing here would be really cool to get a guitar playing that is driving a little bit more okay so i've recorded in the first guitar part which is these power chords just here <laughs> I'm 
going to lay something over the top of that, which is another guitar part. Uh, and this is going to be a very big 80s style guitar. <laughs> We have ourselves like a bridge uh, pre-chorus section now with those two guitars. So now I'm going to think about the chorus. I'm just trying to get all the individual sections down so I kind of have a rough idea of where we're going. I'm thinking it's going to be like almost like a pop rock kind of thing. Cool. So I've got this chord pattern here, which is just going to be main um, power chords on the guitar here. And what I'm doing is the first part of my song here, the guitar is pushed. Comes in before the beat. On the chorus, I want everything to come in more on the beat. So I just put the drum beat in there to demonstrate. So it just feels more chorusy when that happens and it creates a nice contrast between the chorus and the verse. I'm just going to double up this guitar now. So I'm going to add uh, another guitar over the top of that. You know, we've got the power chords, so they're kind of occupying the mid region. And now I'm going to add something in the higher register, which is something like this. And because I want tension through the whole of this chorus, I'm going to keep it on this, on these, uh, this little triad here. Okay, so I've just recorded that in now, and I'm just going to quantize that again to eighth notes. And let's just check it's done that. Yep, yeah, there we go. And I might make this a little cleaner. It sounds quite dirty. Because where we've got the distorted guitars, we probably don't need this to be as dirty now. Now yeah, I'll use the uh, clean plex preset there. It's slightly out of tune, so I think I'll just quickly re-record it in. There we go, I'm really liking the sound of that. That's probably all my guitar parts done for the moment. Cool, so you can see now that we have our three main sections, which is verse, pre, and chorus. And I've not been worried about transitions or layering them up too much. I just want to get the initial structure, but you can hear how the song would be taking shape. In terms of my drums now, so I've kind of got my midsection here. I'm going to add some more synths to this, but before I do that, I actually want to get the drums in because that's going to solidify a bit more of what's going on. And for me, for the chorus, I know that I want some live drums, so I'm going to start there. To do that, I'm going to use some samples, some perfect samples for this called Country Hit. This. Cool, so I've got myself a nice little simple beat in here. I'm just going to change the gain on some of these so it sounds a bit more realistic. So on this one here, on these double hits, I'm just going to turn the gain down of this kick drum here and also this one. Because that's probably what a real drummer would do velocity-wise. So just loop that over. I just held a command to open up my right hand tool, which you can change up here. I like using the marquee tool. And then what I did was I just highlighted over the drum groove. So four bars here. And then I press command R and that loops it like that as a perfect loop. And now because I want this to be um, a little bigger and obviously I'm a sucker for 80 sounds, I'm just going to go grab a vintage drum machine snare. Yeah, I really like that. That's adding a nice bit of top end energy. So we're just going to do that. We're going to do command um, and then highlight our two bar loop here of the snare and then command R just to loop it across. Yeah, that just adds a lot more high end energy to that drum now. I'm also going to add a 707 clap just for a bit of transient energy and interest here. 
So I'm going to get some nice uh, reverb on there. I'm going to use Crystalline by Baby Audio. I need to make sure that Crystalline is set to stereo from mono to stereo, otherwise it won't work. Nice. Uh, so that's sounding really punching. What I'm going to do now is move these up here, just going to color them red so I know that they're drums. And then I'm going to grab my main kit here. This is for the top portion of the kit. So this will be my hats, my crashes and things like that. I'm going to use a live drum kit so it sounds a little bit more real here. Just recording a quick loop there. Time it up. And again, we'll do the same thing here. I'm just going to highlight the loop that I want, which is going to be this. I'm going to press Command R, and it's just going to loop it for me like this. I want this drum pattern to extend across my four bars there, and then. So that's a little bit quiet. So I'm going to add in virtual mix rack here, give it a little bit more top end, and actually turn the volume of it up. I'm going to add the Hollywood saturation channel, this particular one. I find adds just a lot of clarity in the top end, and then we'll just add the trimmer. And then we'll just add uh, a quick compressor here. Just to tame the peaks. Cool. I like how it's sounding. I do think that these kind of ghost hi-hat notes here could be a little quieter to make it a little more groovy. Like that, there you go. Cool, I'll just do the same thing, loop them across. And in fact, I'm gonna take the strength down just to uh, sort of, I don't know, 70% so that we're not completely to the grid with the hat. Sounds a bit more real. Nice, really like the sound of that. And I, I'm just going to add one more final crash symbol. Yeah, and I'm going to get rid of this open hi hat to account for the crash symbol because, again, a drummer probably wouldn't play both at the same time. And then they keep it open here. Let's get rid of this one here. Yeah, that way we get rid of that and it means that the open hi-hat can stay open for longer, which sounds cool. And what I'm gonna do is towards the end here, I'm actually gonna change the kick pattern to match what the guitars are doing. Just add it. And I'm feeling that the top kit would probably change at this point as well. This is what a drummer might do. So on this hit here, they'd probably open the hat a little bit more. And then here they would add maybe a crash. Yeah, 
Yeah, that feels quite nice. Obviously, we'll add the bass in, see how it all sounds in context, but that's what I feel the drummer would probably do. I'll just highlight these two sections. Um, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to highlight this entire chorus. I'm just going to press J, right? So again, I'm holding Command to get my mark key tool up. I'm going to highlight the section and press J. And what it's going to do is create these lovely little loops for me. So if I want to drag them uh, to a future chorus, it's a nice little loop. I might do the same for the hi-hat there as well, uh, the crash symbol. There we go. And now that looks like that. So we have a really nice looking pattern there. So here, I would just want to get like a fill going in. Ba -gam, ba -gam. That feels like something that would happen. Cool. And let's just get a little sweep coming in. Great. So we've got that. Now, uh, what I want to do is add some bass to this just to give it a bit more um, depth. I quite like that DX7 one. That's quite an interesting sound. Let's just add an arpeggiator with Logic. You just go to this little section here above where the instrument is. You click on it and you've got all these different MIDI effects. So I'm going to go for the arpeggiator, set it to eighth notes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to record the bass line in and then I'm going to play around with the sound. I may not mention it before, but the reason that I uh, change the chords at the end of the chorus is because every fourth bar or every fourth round of something, I tend to change it. I do that with my melodies. I do that with my chords. It's a really easy way to add uh, repetitiveness. So it, you kind of get an earworm in a listener's ear, uh, but without getting boring. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to layer up this bass. So I found this two oscillator bass here that I like the sound of. But I think what I want to do is layer up like a real bass sound. Now, I do have a bass. I could play it, but it doesn't have the right sound that I want. And there's a particular bass that I'm thinking of. I just need to change the settings on the ARP, though, the arpeggio, because if you go to options here, note length is 90%. I'm just going to make that 100. Right, now that we've got this kind of main uh, bass here, I'm actually going to change this one here to a more... I'm just going to go back to that original bass that we had, which is called a bass you'll use. Because that's just a really deep sound. I just want a deep sound. Like this. So it doesn't get in the way of what this bass is doing here. And on this second bass, the live bass sound, I'm just going to get rid of the super low end here so it doesn't interfere with the sub. Well, I'm just going to bounce this uh, Rickenbacker bass out. Reason being is because, I mean, you can already see that we've got some inconsistencies in what's happening here. Grab this section here, move it over there. Uh, and I'm going to add, because these guitars here, these three guitars are all playing together, I'm actually going to add them to one bus channel here. I'm just going to add just a little bit of OTT to it, which is a, a crazy compression plug in here. Just change the tonality slightly and make some pop a bit more. Okay, now what I want to do is actually I want to add like a top synth line. And if you remember in our verse here, we had this melody. I would like to reuse a variation of that melody on a brighter, bigger synth. I want it to be a bit more uplifting, so I'm going to change the melody ever so slightly. Yeah, that sounds great. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to add a texture here. It's just a little brass pad underneath everything. You're not really going to hear this, but it's going to add a little bit of richness and depth to the whole sound.
Nice. So if you just play those two synths together. Cool, I'm liking how that chorus is sounding. Let's have a look at the bit before here, which is this kind of build up. So what I want to do is add a little bit of a bass just to give it a little bit of depth at this section. So I'm going to copy the sub bass, take the arpeggio off and add this in. Nice. And when that snare hits, I'm just going to cut out both the guitars there and the bass. So everything kind of stops on the snare hit. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab this kind of guitar here that's playing. And I'm actually going to filter it in. Um, any old filter will do. I'm actually just going to use uh, Scott, the Storch filter here, because this has some effects on it, which are, are quite cool, I think. And I'm just going to automate it. Coming all the way up. And now I'm hearing it actually in context. I might take away this top end of the synth here. Because to me, I think it's going to be too busy. I think if you're going to be singing over this, you don't want too much of that. Great stuff. So I actually like what's happening in that pre-chorus now. I actually am not fussed about going too crazy, adding extra stuff. The only thing I'm going to do is just go to um, a, a high pass filter. So on my Storch filter here. And what I'm going to do is as the bass gets up towards the top here, I'm just going to filter it up so that we're losing a little bit of that low end so that when it kicks back in, it punches like this. And in fact, I'm also going to do the same on the pre-chorus section here. So this is kind of me adding a few little flourishes and effects and things like that. Things that will just make it a little bit easier. Uh, I like doing filter sweeps and things like that. To me, they kind of uh, do a lot of the heavy lifting that you might be looking for. There's lots of other creative ways to do this, but again, I'm looking for quick, easy, and simple right now. So we'll just filter this up. See how that kind of disappears out, right? The bottom end kind of fades. Okay, cool. So I've got, I've dialed in those effects to a place that I like. Let's just look at the transition from the verse into the pre here. Okay, this could definitely do it with like a little bit of a, an impact. I'm going to go over to splice, type in deep impact. I want to go for the most relevant here. Pop that in there. Nice. And we need some kind of riser. I didn't like the fizzle, so we won't have that. We just need like an ambience. There's a perfect one that I'm thinking of here. And in fact, um, there's a couple of extra things I might add just to help lead this in. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Spitfire and go to Labs. And I'm going to go to, there we are, London Atmos, two on the platform. To me, yeah, that's what I'm after. Just a little bit of ambience. going to start the notes off, just line that up, and then I'm going to do it all the way to the end here. And I'm thinking it should loop. And because it's a long drone, I'm just going to bounce it in place, and that way I've got the full audio file like that there. Nice. I'm also just going to add some brass sounds. So this is slightly more orchestral. Uh, if I go to brass, by the way, all this entire thing is free, which is crazy. You get so many sounds for free. Yeah, here it is. I'm going to go for nice and steady brass. I just 
slight wrong note on that last note, but we'll just tidy that up in the MIDI here. And again, I'm just going to bounce that out and that I'm just going to make sure it stops when the drum hits. So there, I think this one will just fade in. Okay, unfortunately, I don't have time to do any more because I have personally run out of time. But uh, let's take a listen to what we've got. Um, this is like more of a polished demo. So what I'd probably do now is grab these sections here and I would actually just drag and drop them like this so I have somewhat a structure of a song like that. There we go. And this is like a really solid foundation to work from now. So let's take a listen from Hoppy through the verse because this is just to repeat here and see what we've got. transition going into the verse there as well so there's a bit to do i was just rebalancing a couple of things as the track was going but that is how essentially we're making a song from scratch and i will come back to this at a later date and i can fine tune it when my ears are a bit more fresh and then uh, write a song over it so hope you found this video useful hope you enjoyed it if you did like follow subscribe and i'll see you in the next one